HSR is becoming what we all knew it was going to become, which is have this character or you lose. And it kind of sucks. It's a shame, but but it really is getting to that issue where have this character for this game mode or you lose. Or you don't get max rewards. Tecton is actually right for once with his take on Apocalyptic Shadow. Honkai Star Rail is heading in a terrible direction with this game mode. I have two main issues with Apocalyptic Shadow. The first issue is what Tecton pointed out. You need extremely specific characters for Apocalyptic Shadow. This isn't an issue right now because there's a wide variety of weaknesses offered by the two boss, but it can be an issue in the future. There's a high chance that both Apocalyptic Shadow bosses only offer one set of weakness, and both of them can have this cancerous mechanic, so if you don't break them, you're screwed. For me, since I vertically invested into two teams, and my wife's only restriction means no Silver Wolf, if both sides have no Quantum or Lightning weakness, I'm in huge trouble. And that's saying a lot because my account is capable of zero-cycling Memory of Chaos 12 even with Asta, and now since I pulled E1 Robin, it got exponentially stronger. Even then, my chances of losing if both sides of Apocalyptic Shadow have Steadfast Guard and no Quantum or Lightning Weakness is extremely high. What about the average player then? Under the same conditions, they might not even be able to clear one star. Firefly isn't a solution either, since there are bosses straight up immune to Super Break. Apocalyptic Shadow is basically a game mode where you need the right elemental type coverage, or have Silver Wolf. Hell, sometimes you need both. This is a terrible game design choice because it promotes horizontal investment instead of vertical investment, which will make your core teams extremely weak. Hoyoverse is essentially forcing you to spread out your resources, and if you're F2P, good luck with that. Having a game mode that cannot be brute forced no matter how well invested your teams are is a step in the wrong direction. Because Hoyoverse can always just do it again and again until you run out of resources. I would rather they just double or triple Memory of Chaos HP. The second issue I have with Apocalyptic Shadow is the fact that it is way too volatile. Hence, it is impossible to judge which character is the strongest on this game mode. There are straight up four options you can pick from. Akron is the fastest clearer for first half. Ratio is fastest clearer for second half. Zeela is the most cost efficient for first half and Boot Hill is the most cost efficient for second half. It is an actual debate because while it would take Akron multiple E6-S5s to get her 6AV or 5AV clear, it would only take 13 costs for Zila to get a 13AV clear. So which is the better option? Thousands of dollars for a 7AV increase sounds ridiculous. And that's not the only issue. Every single Apocalyptic Shadow reruns, there will be four more new teams that are the best in their respective categories. There is pretty much zero consistency in this game mode. You can say Zeal is way better than Firefly on Cochlea Boss, for example, and you would be right. But you can't say Zeal is better than Firefly in Apocalyptic Shadow in general, because that might not be too accurate even though Firefly at E6-S5 is getting gapped by Blade right now. You can never say for sure that X is better than Y in this game mode. This is not an issue in Memory of Chaos. In that game mode, Zeal is consistently the best DPS on everything except Choir Boss, while Akron is consistently the second best Y rising to the top on Choir Boss. Determining who is the best in MOC isn't an issue either, because there's a tangible goal in zero cycling. So whoever uses the lowest limited 5 star cost to zero cycle will be the fastest clearer and the most cost efficient clearer at the same time. Same concept with pure fiction. PF is also quite consistent in this aspect. Zila, Argenti, and Herda are always 
at the top, regardless of the PF buff. Despite people saying PF buffs heavily affect the gameplay, it still stays consistent unlike Apocalyptic Shadow. All in all, Apocalyptic Shadow is a fun game mode to play and watch, but from a game design perspective, it is horrendous and unhealthy for the future of this game. Hoyoverse should honestly just make it easier to brute force and have some semblance of consistency so it'll be possible to establish a hierarchy of DPS. Because right now Akron may be broken, but the next APOC will make her dog shit especially on one of the bosses. And no, I'm not biased because I suck at this mode. I made sure to make this video only after I've done some of the fastest clears, so I'm actually the most qualified person to give an opinion on this topic. Whether you agree or disagree with my take is up to you. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.